Good morning. Anybody have anybody in mind? I had you in mind, Bob. All right. <laughs> Why and me? Just the way that you carry yourself and the confidence that you have in the Lord, it's exuded in you no matter where you are or what you're doing, mm -hmm. whether it's work or with your family or at the church. You just have something about you that says, I'm confident in who I am in the Lord. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Amen. Lord knows that's where I want to be. <laughs> Anybody else? Right. This be right. The sun. If 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 not, I I uh, I want to show you somebody that I that I love to watch on TV that it just exuded confidence. Muhammad Ali. <laughs> when I, yes, sir. When I was growing up, I I can remember when when he first came out and, and fought Sonny Liston in 1964. And I and and I was I was on the wrong side of things at that time. I, I thought, man, this arrogant guy, he's gonna get beat to death. <laughs> My Sonny Liston. <laughs> And and boy, he not only beat him once, he beat him twice. I don't care what people say, mm -hmm. but he exuded confidence. They thought he's gonna get killed yeah. when he fought George Foreman. Yeah. Said, Man, this somebody he shouldn't even fight that fight. He's gonna die. Yes. And and but that brother was confident. Uh, well, you know, there's nothing wrong with confidence. Now, I, now I didn't say arrogance. And 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 my man Muhammad could uh, uh, could he he could be arrogant also. Uh, a story was told about him that uh, he was on a flight, and and uh, the stewardess told him that you need to buckle up. And he said, "Hey, I don't need to buckle up. I'm Superman." And the stewardess said, "Well, you can't fly, so you need to buckle up." <laughs> Well, that's arrogance. <laughs> uh, but uh, we, we, we ought to have confidence in our relationship. We ought to be sure of our relationship with God. That's why we always say that hey, we are to be, uh, it, it, it's not about religion with those of us who are true believers, but it is about relationship. We have a relationship with the Lord. So the point of our lesson today is my relationship with God is reflected in how I live. My relationship with God is reflected in how I live. First uh, John 2, 3 through 11, and 15 through 17 will be our primary focus today because it's only in Christ <clears throat> that our salvation is possible. We can't do it on our own. It's only uh, in, in Christ and we can, we can trust that. We can have confidence in that. John is talking to believers, saints. You can tell that by the affectionate language that he uses because he'll say things in First John, like my little children, that's how he uh, describes them, and, uh, and so he's talking to believers uh, and encouraging them. But he's he's teaching them because he's teaching them that uh, 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 about the relationship with the Lord, and he's he's giving them different tests. John is given different tests, and he uses strong language in his in his epistle in his letter, not only to them, but that strong language language is for us uh, today, uh, because we need to be sure of our relationship with the Lord, and he he's issuing various tests. Last week, the test that he issued for us was the test of forgiveness. Have you been forgiven, truly forgiven? 
and he exposed some things because there were some false teachers, uh, just like there are false teachers in our day today, saints. There was some that was teaching some things about uh, uh, about God that was not true, and teaching some things about forgiveness that was not true. And here's why I want to test you. All right, I want you to talk back to me. There were uh, uh, three things that there are three lies that he exposed. Let's let's put it that way. Three lies that he exposed. And what was the first lie that he exposed? And if you don't have a pencil and paper, I, I need to get one because I'm gonna jot. I, you can jot it down because we'll talk about it again today. Because we need to follow these. As we go through 1 John, all six of our studies in 1 John, these are important things for us to learn, and they help us to learn about our relationship with the Lord. Um, what was the first one, first lie that he exposed? Darkness? Yes, it did have to do with darkness. Uh, we, we say, if we say that we have fellowship with God, and yet we live in darkness. And what do we mean when we say darkness? Doing our own thing, living in the world. Mm -hmm. world. Yes. And there's a three letter word for it also, sin. Mm -hmm. If we just continue to just live in sin. And, and when I say live in sin, saints, I'm not just talking about, because there's some people that think because uh, they don't do the big sins, however you define the big sins. Uh, you know, I don't drink, I don't smoke, uh, and and I don't hang around with people that do. <laughs> and and they, they, they think that they're all right. That's not going to qualify you. Uh, Amen. And, and, uh, because there are other sins as well. <laughs> uh, so that was, that was the first one. What was the second one? that he exposed. And each one of these, it's uh, more ridiculous than the, the previous one. <laughs> that there's two more and, and I'll just go ahead and tell you. Wow. They were saying, so, I have not seen, I have no sin. I, I don't have any sin. No, I don't have any sin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and there are people that say that today. I don't have sin. I have faults. I just have faults. Uh, there are people that, that say that the reason that I live the way that I do is because I was born with this. Um, I, uh, I was brought, I, I was in poverty. And so I learned to steal because a lot of us, all of us, I dare say this on this call were bought up in poverty, but we didn't that, that we didn't use that as an excuse to steal. And so people look at it as a fault. Uh, that I, I have my faults, uh, but all of y'all have fault, which it, but all have sin and come short of the glory of God. Uh, the, the first one is found in verse six. The one that I'm talking about now is found in verse eight. And then it comes to verse 10 was the third lie that he exposed. And what was that third lie? Mm. Confession. If you say you have not seen. Yes, there you go. I, you know, I just, I have not seen. <laughs> that's a lie. I'm, I'm okay, that's, that's a lie. Uh, we, we talked about that Pharisee and the publican that were in the temple and the Pharisee was talking about all that he did for God. And yet he, he was treating it like he had not seen the rich young ruler. Uh, when he came to Jesus, he was so proud of what he had accomplished uh, in life. And, and so he had the attitude I have not seen. Uh, and, and John gave us a remedy last week uh, because we all have seen it. And what he's, he, he's talking to Christians, keep that in mind, because verse nine is written to Christians. See, you can't confess your sins right. truly 
and seek and and call on God and 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 seek forgiveness of your sins if you haven't taken care of first things first. And the first thing that we have to take care of is we have to accept Jesus as Lord and Savior. It is without Him we are powerless. We have to have faith in Christ. Uh, and so that's the first step that we must take. And so John was taking us through the first step last week. And this week, he's taking us through the second step. There's a second step, not, 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 not for salvation. Uh, I, I'm, I'm not talking about that. Uh, because if we truly have faith in, in Christ, uh, something else is going to show up. There is an assurance that we're going to have. And we, 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 we'll talk about assurance because it, 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 there's two things, two ways for us to look at this. And really, when you look at verse uh, three through six, we're going to look at that first. And it says, and hereby we know that we know him if we keep his commandments. He that saith, I know him and keepeth not his commandments is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But whoso keepeth his word in him, verily is the love of God perfected. Mm -hmm. Hereby know we that we are in him. He that saith he abideth in him ought himself also so to walk, even as he walked. The theme of this section of scripture that we're about to get into in verses uh, Three through eleven is found in verse three, and what's that theme? To know him. Mm. You know what? We can know that we know him. And if I ask all of you, and probably all of you would raise your hand, and I trust that is true. But we're going to examine this by the scripture, by what we're going to talk about today. I don't have to guess if I know him. Right. <laughs> See, some of us are hung up on feelings because it, it, it's not how I feel as to whether I know him or not. Hallelujah. Thank the Lord. Because have, have any of you ever gotten to the point where you didn't feel like you did know him, that you had strayed so far and so forth? Uh, uh, that, that, that's possible. And, and, uh, uh, but, but we can know that we know him. And the way, how can we know that we know him? That's the cheapest commandments. Hello. Amen. Y'all, this is, as I love to say, this is an open book test. We're going to go through all the answers <laughs> through this passage of scripture. And that's what it said. That's what the word clearly says. So it's it's untrue. Going back to what we talked about last week in and, 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 and the first chapter. It's untrue to say that I can just live in darkness. It's my pattern of life. It's, a, it's my pattern to just live in sin <clears throat> and not seek God. I, 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 I heard this from, uh, and, and I'll talk about this brother uh, a little bit later in, in my, uh, uh, as, as we discuss the lesson today. A, a great preacher that's gone on to be with the Lord by the name of Adrian Rogers. Adrian Rogers was often quoted uh, many times when I'd listen to uh, Dr. E.K. Bailey, he would quote Adrian Rogers. And Adrian Rogers would make the statement, and it's very true, that it's not about perfection. It's about direction. Because if, if you're connected to the Lord, you're going to continue in that direction you're going to follow him you're going to seek to follow him your life will change it it, it, it is uh, it is a lie from the devil to say that i know the lord and my life has not changed it's going to uh, uh, to change and so you're going to keep his commandments not perfectly i'm so glad when i get to heaven that he's not going to say Bill, it was perfectly done. <laughs> but he's going to say what? Well done. Yeah. Thy good and, and faithful. faithful servant. Yeah. Amen. That's what I want to be. I want to be a faithful servant to him and follow him. And, and so we can have assurance of our eternal security. 
we, we can know that we are saved. And, and, and so what, is, what does eternal security mean? What does eternal security mean? First thing that it means is, and you might want to jot this down, that it's based on God's promise. It's not based on what you do. It's based on what God's promise is to you. Uh, that's why John 3.16 is one of our favorite verses, right? For God so loved the world, not because of what Dang. we did, <laughs> because, but it's because of what he did. He gave his only begotten son. And that whosoever, whoo, I like what Terrell says all the time. I'm, I'm glad my name is whosoever, <laughs> that believeth in him shall not perish. That's a promise from God. Amen. And, and, but we have eternal life. Uh, and it, so it's based on, uh, secondly, what God did, his work, what God's work is. And what my role is in it, I receive him by faith. I have received Christ by faith. Now, the other side of that and where Christians struggle, I've, I've, I've talked with various Christians and I, my, my mother helped me with this. I tell you this all the time when I was, when I was a boy about my assurance that I have been saved, that I have a relationship with the Lord, that it was based on scripture. That's what I, that's what I base it on. If somebody asked me, how do you know that you're saved? I, 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 yes, I, 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 have, I have confessed with my mouth. I believe in my heart that God has raised him from the dead. I, I, I didn't just say those words, but I trust him and I seek to follow him uh, in, 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 in my daily life. And because of that, I, and because he promised that, he promised that if, if, if I have faith in him, if I trust him, if you love me, you'll obey my commandments. It's what Jesus said to his disciples and what he's saying to us. Then he says, I can have that assurance that I'm saved. And then uh, the, the, the second thing about how you know that you can have assurance is that it's your experience. What, what do I mean by experience? There's a change, a change, a change in my life. I can look back on my life and mm -hmm. I can see, and, 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 and I, it, it's not just now, it's, it, it, it continues. You continue to see changes in your life. The Lord's going to continue to work on you. Amen. Amen. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's how you know that you're saved because you're not going to remain in sin. Uh, because what you're going to do is you're going to live by faith. You're going to walk by faith. You're going to trust him. Uh, you're going to stand on his word, saints. And, and, and when I stand on his word, that means that there are works that follow me. You're going to be able to see some works in my life. If a person has not changed, and if they're not working for the Lord, they have reason to question their salvation. Because yeah. those things, that's, that's going to happen in your life. Uh, when you come to accept Christ as Savior, Amen. and so let's look at let's look at verses four and five. Verses four and five, because let, let me ask you, uh, what is your physical blood type? Anybody, anybody know what their physical blood type is? Oh, yeah. negative, positive. What was yours? Mine oh, is O positive. Okay, all right, yeah. A lot of us know that, right? Because uh, you you uh, you don't want to get the wrong blood type, do you? <laughs> so what will happen if you got the wrong blood type in a transfusion? Mm -hmm. It won't yeah. help you. No, it sure won't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can die. <laughs> you are, that's that's why you have to identify your blood type. Well, there is. I want us, this scripture in verses four and five, oh. there is a scriptural blood type <laughs> is what I, is what we want to identify. 
just like you, you either type O or type B or type A. Uh, uh, there is there, there's two different spiritual blood types that are, that we're talking about here in this scripture. And in verse four, what are you? What would you say the first physical? I'm not physical. I'm sorry. Spiritual blood type is. Uh, negative. Oh, <laughs> positive. Oh, by, <laughs> obey. Oh, positive. Obey. <laughs> no, he that no. saith I know him and keep is not. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. So right. So, what's negative. the first one? Hey. Hey. Let, let me. It's type L. <laughs> Liar. <laughs> there are some people that say that Christians need to lie. <laughs> hey, I didn't say it. I told you John is a cold-blooded brother. He ain't cold, he cold-blooded in a godly way. In the way. <laughs> God has said, some of y'all out there, you just lying. <laughs> now, now, I didn't make that up, did I? Underline uh -uh. it in your Bible. <laughs> That, that, that's the first spiritual type. That, that, that's some liars out there. <laughs> uh, and and how, how do you know whether you're lying or not? The truth is not in him. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. Amen. Amen. Well, yeah, you yeah. don't keep his commandments either. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Number one, you claim that you know, but you right. don't know. Mm. Number two, as, as the pastor already said, you don't obey. <laughs> you care less about obeying God. You're going to adopt the ways of the world. And we'll talk about the world later and, and what the Bible means when it's talking about the world. Uh, it, it doesn't matter to you. Hey, it's my thing and I want to do whatever I want to do is, is the religion that we follow. <laughs> and, um, and we don't live the truth. We, we don't want to live according to the truth of God's word. Uh, now, I, I'm going to say something to give. I, I, I know that there are people that are saved that don't even look like it, that they're saved. Uh, that's why I believe Jesus taught us in the church that we're not to do the separating. Well, of what? The wheat and tear. Why? Because <laughs> he'll do it. He will do it, and they look alike. Alike. Mm -hmm. well. There are some similarities mm -hmm. <laughs> that are there, and and and. But he's the only because he's the only one that can look at the heart. Mm -hmm. He knows whether I'm for real or not. Mm -hmm. I might be fooling y'all, and I'm teaching y'all yeah. Sunday school class, leading <laughs> leading off in it. Amen. I, 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 don't, I don't believe I'm fooling you. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but but it, it's possible. There are people that, that do that. There are people in the pulpit. They're nothing yes, but liars. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> but boy, they can preach. Amen. Yeah. I, I, uh, uh, and I'm not saying uh, I'm going to give an example, and I'm not trying to bash the man too bad. You know, it was hard for me to watch the TV series on Aretha Franklin. You know why? Oh, no. Because no, I no. looked at her daddy and I thought, oh, man, no. does this man Ooh, really know the Lord? Exactly. <laughs> I'm sorry, hey. y'all, but true. Dude, that true, really. Me. Yeah. Something was bad wrong with that. Me too. Yes, sir. <laughs> and, and I believe that people that could preach out of this world and in hell, they will <laughs> lift up their eyes. And I'm not saying uh, Reverend Franklin is. Because he may be one, he may be one of these carnal Christians. I mean, boy, <laughs> carnal, carnal, man. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, and, and and there are people out there. Y'all know it. I, I I when I attended the Congress, and I used to see these all these preachers at the oh, bars yeah. and what have you. Mm -hmm. And I thought, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. <laughs> uh, <laughs> And yes. with and with their ladies also, you, you, and, and I don't mean that wives. Not they wives. Wives home. Yeah, that's yeah. That's wives home. Girlfriends. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. It, it's sad. It's sad. Yep, but well, let me move on. But all I'm saying there's some type L's out there. Yes, don't sir. be a type L, y'all. <laughs> don't don't be a liar. But there's some. There's another type. Type five. I mean, that's that's identified in verse. 
verse five. What type are they? Perfect. Mm. I said I like L positive. <laughs> right, yeah. Cake. Keeper no. of his word. Yeah, amen. I, I like what the pastors, they're type O's. They they obedient. Well, they're obedient to the Lord. They want to walk after God. They don't want to walk after the themselves so they they claim they know him and they do know him but they obey his word his word means something to them uh, that's why some people can sit in church sunday after sunday after sunday and god's word has no impact on them mm. they reject it amen mm -hmm. uh, but but and these people Another way that you can identify them is they truly love. Woo! Yeah, that's why I said that. Y'all, that's scary Pops. right there. <laughs> <laughs> and who do they truly love? The Lord and my neighbor. <laughs> Lord have mercy, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What's that? Um, I, I can't remember how it goes right now. I'm, I'm, I'm going to take a stab at it. Um, it, it it said that uh, that uh, something about um, uh, I I live in love with the saints above, uh, but something about those below I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but Thank listen, saints, you need to, you, we need to love no. one another below. Exactly. <laughs> you you might not like me, Amen. Right. But, th but that doesn't mean that, because you may not like some of my ways. Uh, there may be some ways that maybe that I offend you. But as a Christian believers, we ought to love one another. Uh, and and uh, let's, let's look at verses. Uh, because, well, again, just finally, in verse 6. Because if you abide in him, you're going to walk and we're going to walk like whom? Jesus. Amen. That's the he in verse six. We're going to walk as he walked. Not perfectly. Amen. But we, we're going to seek to follow him. Somebody read verses seven through 11. I will. Brethren, I write no new commandment unto you, but an old commandment, which ye have heard from the beginning. The old commandment is the word which ye have heard from the beginning. Again, a new commandment I write unto you, which thing is true in him and in you, because the darkness is past and the true light now shineth. He that saith he is in the light and hateth his brother is in darkness even until now. Well, he that hmm. loveth his brother abideth in the light, and there is none occasion of stumbling in him. But he that hateth his brother is in darkness and walketh in darkness and knoweth not whether he goeth because that darkness had blinded his eyes. Mm, amen, amen. Verse seven, what's the old command? Love the Lord thy God. With all your girl, heart. Girl, girl, teach, teach. Yeah, yeah. And what else? So, the commands and the love thy neighbor. Woo! As thyself. Self. <laughs> Amen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jesus broke it down for us, didn't he? Yes. And, and that's that's not that, that's not a new command. Mm. That's an old one. You yeah. can read that in the old testament as well as the new. That, that was God's intent uh, for us. Amen. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and and that's how Jesus lived his life. Uh, remember when he was tempted by the devil uh, mm -hmm. in the wilderness? Yes, sir. All those quotes that you hear Jesus quote, where did they come from? The Old Testament. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. When he was teaching on uh, uh, the Mount of Olives, he said that, you know, it, it was no new commandment that I'm giving you. It's an old commandment. <laughs> and and uh, 
uh, he expected them to follow that uh, commandment. See, because God is love, we ought to be love also. We ought to be love. Uh, and uh, what is the new commandment in verse 8? I'm going to help us out here. Uh, he makes us new. <laughs> Paul said it this way. Thank you, Lord. That I'm a new what? Preacher. Yeah. In Christ oh, Jesus. As pastor. Oh, yeah. The, the whole, whole all things. All things are new. I'll become yeah. new. Amen. Yeah, 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 yeah. He is a new we are new creatures in Christ. Thank that's you, that's the new thing. Amen. Amen. Um, there is a difference between darkness and light. Amen. Mm -hmm. And it don't take much light to dispel the darkness, does it? Uh, no, no. Somebody said that, that the most important light in your house is what? The light. Did I hear somebody say something? Say that again. The most important light in your house. Uh. <laughs> I didn't hmm? hear. Somebody said something. I know. Is it, it that individual? The person? Uh, and I'm talking about a physical light. The most light important bird. light in your house. The, the light bird. The light, the light bulb. bulb. <laughs> All right. No, somebody said the most important light in your house is the night light. Okay. You shouldn't try to get up and walk in the darkness. <laughs> well. <laughs> and that is true of us spiritually. You can't walk in darkness. You got to have the light. Amen. Amen. And 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 once and once the once the light comes. It's light out there right now. Amen. Mm -hmm. Look at your blinds. I see some of the, uh, Jocelyn, where she is right now, at TJ and Taylor's beautiful home uh, in, in, in Texas. Amen. With that, with that beautiful swimming pool in the background and palm trees and what have you. Uh, but, but, but it's light. It's light. It's, 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 and, 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 when, and when the light shines, it dispels the darkness. The same is true of our lives also. When the light of Jesus comes into your life, it's going to start dispelling that darkness. Now, uh, uh, we, uh, we, uh, we'll talk about this next week. In fact, I'm going to uh, send you out something. It's, it's a message from Dr. Adrian Rogers. And like always, when I send you out these messages, it's, and, and I'm going to ask the pastor to send it, uh, send it out. Uh, because sometimes it doesn't get to some of you, but I want you to listen to it because there are different levels of Christians. And I want, and this is part of your homework. I want you to define where you are because uh, this is not a part of our printed text is verses 12 through 14 in first John two, because there are different levels of Christian. Are you a child? Are you a young man? Are you a father? I want you to listen to that message and you just evaluate yourself. It's between you and God because there is such a thing as baby Christians. All they do is cry, cry, cry all the time. <laughs> Pastor know what I'm talking about. He, they, 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 man, they, they, they love to cry. Amen. They have difficulty with people. Amen. They, they do. It's hard for them to get along with folks. Uh, and and, and y'all, uh, we can love people in spite of. You know why? Mm -hmm. Just read 1 Christ. Corinthians 13, amen. Because <laughs> God loves us that way. He loves me in yes, spite yes, of yes. me. Amen. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, Lord. Mm -hmm. So let's, let's move on to verses 15 through 17. Verses 15 through 17. Somebody read that for us, please. Uh, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, 
the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof, but he that doth the will of God abide forever. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Chris. Amen. Thank you. Sure. Now, what does the Bible mean when it talks about the world? The world. That's important to us lust as believers. The, the what now? Lust of the flesh. Now, it's, that, it's that's the that, devil. It's the prince of darkness. The things yeah. that are in the world that the devil makes appear to be wonderful and good and that we all want it, oh, but yeah. it's going to pass away. Amen. I, you know, the, one of the best definitions that I've heard is that it's the world system, the right. world system, saints. Yeah. Uh, because what the devil is, he's a deceiver. He exactly. is a liar. He is a liar. What the devil does, he'll take things that God made that are perfect. There's nothing Come wrong on. with them. And he'll he'll use those things to deceive us. Come here, Eve. Well, <laughs> yeah. Amen. Amen. Uh, Y'all remember her in the Garden of Eden? And and that that's a devil's modus operandi, his method of operation is still the same. And that's where the that, that's where the pastor was getting into because it's defined in this scripture. Because it, uh, it, there are three things that it mentions, and these are his tactics, and they work beautifully. They work mm -hmm. beautifully with us. What are the, what are the three tactics? The lust of the flesh, amen, of the eyes, and the pride. Wow, wow, yeah. We, 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 I, I, I want to quickly go through those things because I know I'm running out of time. First, I want to go back to cosmos. Uh, the word in the Greek for world here is cosmos. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, and and uh, uh, some of our English words, and this will help us to understand it, uh, because ladies use what we call cosmetics. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's derived from that word cosmos. And what cosmo, what co uh, cosmetics do is they, they put in order or arrange the proper condition that we want for our face, right? Amen, ladies. <laughs> that I, I I I put some makeup on me. Yeah. Uh, and, and and cosmetology. Amen. I fix my hair. <laughs> Amen. And, and and get it arranged so that it looks good. Well, cosmos, what the devil wants to do, he corrupts things that are perfect. Yeah. Uh, it, there's nothing wrong with being hungry, is you might be a little hungry right now. Mm -hmm. Amen. But guess what? It's a sin to be gluttonous. Great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sex is a beautiful thing. God made that. The devil didn't make that. <laughs> but if I if I do it outside of the way God has it planned, it outside, of, outside of marriage, amen. <laughs> amen. Because hey, uh, talk about the the lust of the flesh. That gets us a lot, don't it? Yeah. <laughs> as, as we've grown up through the years. We, we developed that attitude. If loving you is wrong, guess what? I don't want to be right. <laughs> that's, right. That's, that's what he, he, John is talking about here. That's what happens with people. And lust of the eyes. Lust of the eyes. We want more. It's, it's, and it is lust. It's lust. We want stuff that we don't even need. need. Yeah. Yes, yes. We want more than we need. Amen. Yeah, that's that. That's lust. Uh, and then, and then the pride of life. Have you ever remember growing up with somebody? They get new clothes, and you couldn't afford to get new clothes. And boy, they just brag about their clothes. <laughs> 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 Didn't yeah. it make you sick? Somebody yeah. come home. Uh, I, I ain't messing with you, early, but uh, people from California used to go, what kind of car you drive, brother? <laughs> they were so proud. They proud of, of the life that they live and, and what they had. <laughs> Amen. Uh, and that's the pride of life. 
that shows that shows up in us. And that's what John is talking about here. That we love the world, we love the world system more than we love what God has to say about it. And listen, Saint, it's so easy for us to get caught up in it. That's why, I mean, there's some people, uh, that's why they, they're more Republican than they are Christian. They're more <laughs> Democrat than, 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 than they are Christian. They're more black. Hey, well. <laughs> I know black lives matter, but they're more black than they are Christian. I know I know, I offend some folks when I say that, but I, I know that's the truth because it's not. Yeah. You know what I want to be first? I want to be like him. Yes. <laughs> Amen. It, it's not about politics. It's not Amen. about race. Amen. What matters most to me is my relationship with him. Um, uh, because and, and, and why, finally, in conclusion, verse 17 tells us. Because what does it tell us? Verse 17. All this stuff is going to pass away. But he abided but, forever. Yes. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yeah, yeah the songwriter right. said it real well when he said, only the things I do for Christ, Christ will are going to lay. I don't care how much money you make. <laughs> Amen. I don't care what kind of house you live in. Hmm. Uh, I don't care how many degrees. I, I mean, I could go on and on and right. on saying because see, God is, he, he's more interested in developing you as a follower of Christ than he is Amen. all those things, saints. Mm -hmm. They don't nearly matter as much. And so, Lord, I I know that those things are going to pass away. I that's yeah, My passion is with you, dear God. Uh, saints, your homework is I want you to listen to what is going to be sent out to you later today from Dr. Adrian Rogers, a great man of God. Uh, and, and, and it's from this text, but it's, it's based is verses 12 through 14 primarily. And I want you to ask the question, Lord, where am I in my development as a believer? Am I, am I more like a baby? Am I more sure. like a young man? And, and you'll understand it better when you read this, amen, when you, when you, when you listen to that. And I encourage you to listen to it. It's, the, it's some of the best 29 minutes that you can spend, amen. amen. Oh, Lord, am I a father? And, and, and I want you to listen to that and let's evaluate ourselves as we go through this because what John is encouraging us to do is grow in the Lord. This, you know, the, the, one of the tests today, uh, the first the test we learned last week was the test of forgiveness. And, and today we learn the test of relationship. We also learn the test of affection. What am I truly in love with? Uh, that some people then they're not gonna go to church because they uh, they want to watch their favorite football team today. Hey Amen. Across this nation, <laughs> they, they, they they gonna fill up the stadiums by the millions. Hey Amen. Mm -hmm. And 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 then uh, in verses twelve through fourteen, there's a test of growth. Am I really growing in the yeah. Lord? Because you ought to grow in the Lord if you are one of his. Yeah. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Amen. Amen. Our Father, how we love your word and are yes. challenged by your word, dear God. Thank you, Lord, that you gave this tough word to John because, Lord, I, I need work. Mm -hmm. mm, I'm your servant, Lord, but I want to continually grow in Jesus. And that's not only me, that's all of us that are on uh, this that online have, and listen to you and at the church wherever we are dear God so I pray for us Lord help us to grow and be more and more like Jesus in the precious and powerful name of Jesus I pray Amen Amen, Amen. Alright let's talk about the truth next week Amen. Right. Let's talk about the truth. Thank you for a good class and hello Amen. to everybody. Hi. Hey, hello to you. Amen. Hey, pray, pray, hey, pray, praying for Alan. Pray. Praying for you too, O. Praying for you, you, my brother. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes. And yeah, my brother. Love you. Yes, Lord. Amen. Love you all. Love you, Jay. Love you, Early. Okay. Everybody on this call. Love y'all. Okay, love all you too. Right. Right. Yeah. Hey, Chrissy, Chris. Bye hey, <laughs> bye. All, All right. right. Have, Have a blessed great, day. Great yes. Sunday. God bless. Yes, sir. Bless <laughs> you.
This is the generation of they that seek him, that seek thy face, O Jacob. 
Lift up your heads, O ye gates, be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord strong in battle. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, even you lift, lift them up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. All. Who is the King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. See them. Amen. watching over us last night, Lord, that you allowed us to slumber and sleep, and you had your angels watching and guarding over us. And you touched us with your finger of love on this yes, day. Yes, to uh, come and praise and worship you on this day. Yes, and Lord, Lord, I come asking you to forgive us of our sins, Lord. I'm not only praying for me, but I'm praying for every person that's in this building. Yes, Lord. Lord, I ask that you touch them that don't know you. Oh, we have so many lost loved ones out there, Lord, that don't know you're in the part of their sin. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Lord, it's daylight, and they're walking in darkness. They yes, don't even know how to yes, turn yes, from their dark ways and come to you, Lord. But I just ask you, Lord, just to send one across their pathway. Because, Lord, you are able. We have to look, we have to believe, and we have to depend on you. Yes, Because, Lord, Lord there's no other God like you. Yes. There's no one like you, and you're the only someone that we need. Yes, Lord. I pray for our services on the day. I ask that you yes, touch Lord. Pastor yes. Anton in a yes. mighty and an awesome way. Yes. You use him, Lord. And Lord, I just pray for someone that may be lost. Lord, I lift my son right here up to you. Yes, Lord. You know yes, what he's going Lord. through, Lord. And I ask, Lord, that your will be done. <laughs> George, just give me your strength. Yes, I go each and every day, Lord. Lord. Yes, Lord. It's not easy, and I try to do my best. Yes, so I just ask you to continuously lift me up. Yes, Be with Lord. the rest of my family as we go through this uh, battle each and every day with him, Lord. Yes, Lord. Just continuously, Lord. I just pray that he give it to you. Yes, Lord. You brought in 45 years of his life. Yes, one kid, Lord. Yes, Lord. We never knew it was a surprise to me, but Lord, it wasn't a surprise to me. Yes, Lord. So I thank you. Lord, it's someone else that's going through some sickness. I don't yes, even know about it, but Lord, you know. So I ask you to stretch your arms and your angels around each and every one of them. Yes, Lord. Because, Lord, we need you. Yes. It's a time in our lives, Lord, we don't need no one but you. Yes, Lord. So I thank you so much for the Prince family that's here on today. Yes, it's good to see you, Lord. Lord. And it's good to see everyone that is here. Yes, and decide Lord. to come out. And want to praise you and spend some time with you for this day. Yes. Lord. I thank you, Lord. I ask you to touch the preach word and you be with each and every one of us. Yes, Lord. Lord, I just thank you for these blessings and others. Amen.
Amen and praise the Lord. I'm going with Jesus all the way in Jesus' name. We want to thank you, choir, for leading us in Zion songs this morning in worship. And we're going to continue worship in our giving. It's time for our offering. Praise the Lord. Oh, you can do better than that. It's time for our offering. Praise the Lord. Amen. Our giving determines what? Amen. Let's continue to worship God in our giving. Amen. Shall we pray? Father God, we thank you, Lord. We praise you. We glorify your holy name as we have worshipped you in our giving, Father. We pray that you'll manifest your word, Father. Open up the windows of heaven and pour out blessings that we won't have room enough to receive. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen and praise the Lord. Once again, we want to thank you for being in the household of the Lord. We want to thank you for you're being mindful of the COVID protocols uh, as we've decided to go into these protocols this fall because of the variant that is spreading beyond belief uh, in our culture and in our society now. Uh, we want to encourage and challenge you to be involved with Zoom Sunday School. Uh, Zoom Sunday School was a wonderful time this morning. Our Sunday School teacher was out of town, but we had him in the sanctuary this morning. And he did an excellent lesson, did an excellent lesson. And I want to encourage and challenge you all to be involved with Zoom Sunday School as well as Zoom Bible Study on Wednesdays at 6 p.m. I'll send out the codes in the pastor's text, and we want you to continue to be involved there in Jesus' name. And also, I uh, want you to join us in our fasting and praying on September the 17th, uh, 2021, from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. And we uh, will be praying, uh, particularly for our times. The reason we began this was because of the COVID uh, uh, times. And we need to continue to pray and continue to press on in this until we have the complete victory over it amen complete victory so we want to challenge you to join us this friday from 7 a.m to 7 p.m and the last announcement i want to share with you is uh the fourth sunday of this month september the 26th we will be celebrating 119 years uh, of uh, us being here at the Bethlehem Baptist Church, 119 years, and we're having our preacher, Reverend Ronell Peters, who's coming all the way from Houston, Texas, to celebrate with us. Our theme will be walk by faith and not by sight, and we need to continue to do that in these times, Second uh, Corinthians uh, 5 and 7, walk by faith and not by sight, so we're excited about celebrating and it is a homecoming as well uh, so we want you to be here and uh, because of our times we're going to eat or have our food to go uh, but we will celebrate 119 years 119 years here at the bethlehem baptist church amen and praise the lord it is good to see the princes in the house this morning give god a hand clap of praise for them amen 
as always, wonderful to see you guys. Uh, we're praying a special prayer for those that are traveling. We have a few folk who are traveling this morning, and uh, we'll pray a special prayer for that. And uh, I'll pray a special prayer after the service. We're praying for uh, Sister Nell and her family and, and the loss of her dad. Uh, we'll continue to pray for the Thomas and the Campbell's family as they continue to grieve. Uh, the Jackson family continue to grieve, and I'll say a special prayer after I finish the word today. Amen? Amen, Amen and praise the Lord. We're continuing in the series this morning uh, entitled, The Others, The Others, and it's based on Hebrews chapter 11, verse 35, The Others, and uh, as I was preaching in the Can't Stop, Won't Stop series, we ran across uh, the Hall of Fame of Faith, and I, I made the observation that we always teach and preach on the top part of Hebrews chapter 11, which shares all the victories uh, that the people of God have, uh, but we never, never, ever preach about the others. Hebrews 11 and 35 says, and there were others who were tormented refusing to be released so that they might gain an even better resurrection. This series is on faith-based suffering because there were others who did not get delivered, who did not get healed. They were tormented. They were jeered. They were flogged. They were stoned. They were chained. They were in prison. They were sawn in two and killed by the sword. There were others um, that we never talk about, like uh, those strange people in our families that we never talk about, that we have hidden away. But these are the people that can help inspire us, especially in a time such as this. Uh, they were faithful to God, even to the point of death. Let me say that again. They are faithful to God, even to the point of death. And you may say, preacher, that's, that's kind of radical to being faithful to God to the point of death. And uh, it may seem a little radical, but what did we just celebrate yesterday? Um, we celebrated 9-11, 9-11 yesterday. And what happened on 9-11? People that we described as terrorists um, flew the planes into the Twin Towers there in New York and even tried to hit the Pentagon in one plane crash uh, somewhere in Pennsylvania. Well, these men, who we call terrorists, thought they were following their God. They were being religious. They believed that if they gave the ultimate sacrifice for their faith, ah, that they would be rewarded in the afterlife. And because of what they believed to the point of death, they were willing to give their lives because of what they believed, and they believed in a fallacy. Hello, somebody. Say, is this radical? But people who can believe a myth can sacrifice their life. How much more so should we as Christians who are standing in the truth of God's word. Now, most of us, as I said during this series, most of us will not be called to give the ultimate sacrifice, but the sacrifice that God wants from us is complete obedience to his word. Complete obedience to his word. And that kind of death is a dying to self. It's a a living sacrifice that God talks about in the Bible. See, uh, a sacrifice that dies is dead, but a living sacrifice 
have to choose each and every day to stay on the altar of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So this series about the others um, could change the way we look at Christianity. It could change the world. And I've always said that because of these few people who decided to die, who decided to go all the way for their beliefs, I can't even get on a plane without stripping half naked. Hello, somebody. <laughs> because of what they believed. Hello, somebody. So we're going to continue in this series on the others. And uh, uh, this morning we're going to talk about um, the people that produce martyrs the people that produce martyrs and we're going to be looking at matthew chapter 23 verses 33 would you stand in reverence to the word of god stand symbolically saying that i will stand on the word of god it's two slides let's read this out loud together at the same time on three one two three Of Zechariah, son of Barakai, whom you heard between the temple and the altar. Truly I tell you, all this will come upon the generation. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you will kill the prophets and stone those sent to you. How often I am alone to gather your children together as they have gathered their kids under her wings. Amen and praise the Lord. You may be seated in the household of the Lord this morning. Again, we're talking about the people that produce martyrs, the people that produce martyrs. And we're going to look on around three uh, movements in the, in the text, three points in the text. We're going to talk about the people were snakes, uh, the people were what? Snipers, the people were what? Wiping out the saints. The people were snakes. The people were snipers. The people were wiping out the saints. And we want Christians to know this morning that Christians should beware of false teachers. Christians should beware of false teachers. And uh, with the same disdain that we in our day have for terrorists. Jesus had this same disdain for false teachers. Listen to what he says. Testify against yourself that you are the descendants of those who murdered the prophets. Fill up this. 
Amen. And praise the Lord. Again, this morning we're talking about the people that produce martyrs. And again, I want to put you in the mindset of 9-11 and how Americans feel about terrorists. Most of us on that day can remember where we were. I remember where I was on 9-11. I had taken my prayer partner to work because his car was in the shop that morning and on my way back home I began to hear tales about on the radio about some plane that crashed into a building in New York. It sounded a bit fanciful and I didn't really pay it any attention because I thought it was a radio prank. Back in the days, they used to do crazy radio pranks. And I didn't think much of it until I came into the house where I was living and I turned on the TV and uh, um, I, I turned on the TV and the news was covering this plane that crashed now into one of the twin towers. And I think most of Americans probably didn't even know what or where the twin towers was before that day. But they crashed into a building and I was turning on every channel I turned. They were reporting this news about a plane and then we were thinking it was some kind of accident. It was an accident. Oh, but it's an accident and it has never happened before. Crashed into a plane and, and, and I kept looking and then all of a sudden the second plane crashed into the second building. And from that point on, we know all of America as we was looking in, we knew that it wasn't an accident, it was an incident. It was on purpose, and we did not know what in the world was going on. And I, like most of the people on that day, I, I, I looked at the news. I was captivated by the news, seeing everything that was about to happen. And I think it was somewhere around noon and one or two o'clock, somewhere in that afternoon. Oh, the whole building came crashing down. And in horror, I looked and saw, oh, both of the buildings crashed right before our very eyes. And all of America and all of the world saw what was going on. And we were deeply saddened. This was not an accident. This was an incident. We heard about the plane trying to crash into the Pentagon. And, and we later heard about another plane oh and to wish the heroes uh, on that plane uh, rushed they say the cockpit and it didn't make it to their destination it crashed because people fought that day that day in America oh we became one oh we weren't Republicans uh, we weren't Democrats uh, oh we weren't from the south uh, we weren't from the east uh, we weren't Yankees uh, we were one because of this devastation that happened because uh, crazy men who believed in their religion that if they gave their life the thing will be what we wanted in the afterlife. Crazy cowards, I say. Cowards they are. Most of us Americans didn't even know anything about these terrorists. And most of us back then probably couldn't have found Afghanistan on the map. And they did this to us. And from that point on, we had hatred in our heart for terrorists. So much so, a 20 year war took place. Yes, 20 years because, because of the terrorists, we went looking for them and they found Bin Laden way later, I think, under Obama's administration. 20 year war because of our hatred for the terrorists. 
that war started because of 9-11. Hello, somebody. And yesterday, we celebrated 20 years of, of remembrance, of remembrance. And I said all that to say that in the same way we look at terrorists, in America is the same way that Jesus looked at uh, all the Pharisees in the Bible. They were terrorists. Oh, they didn't crash into the building. They, 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 they didn't crash into a skyscraper. But they did crash uh, into the temple of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. They were terrorists to him. Oh, and he didn't have any good words to say about, oh, the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the teachers of the law. He hated them. Hello, somebody. I hated what they did to God's religion so much so that they led the people astray to where God would tear down his own temple. Because people were not living right. People were not living holy. And here in the text we see, the first thing we see, oh, the people were snakes, he said. And he was talking about the Pharisees and the teachers of the law. They, they were snakes. And how do I know he believed they were snakes? Uh, it's because he said it. Hello, somebody. You snakes. You brood of vipers, you snakes, uh, you brood of vipers, uh, a brood of vipers like a pit of snakes. Hello, somebody. Collectively, they came together and Jesus called them snakes. You're a snake in the grass. I shared on Heads Up for the Weekend by how I pastored in West Texas and Abilene, Texas, and some of you visited me there. 32 miles from Abilene, Texas is a place called Sweetwater where I, on occasion, got to go and preach at the Greater Zion Baptist Church there under with Dr. Jackson there. Sweetwater, Texas is known internationally for what they call the Rattlesnake Roundup. The Rattlesnake Roundup. They literally do what folk do here in Paul's Valley for the Newland Tournament. Except uh, bringing back not huge catfish, they actually bring back rattlesnakes. Hello, somebody. Rattlesnake Roundup. Needless to say, I've never been to a rattlesnake roundup. Hello, somebody. <laughs> I've never been to a rattlesnake roundup until I started to pass in the church. Because most pastors and sincere people of God, uh, oh, in our church today, we have to deal with snakes, folk uh, who act like they're Christian, folk who say they're Christian, but they are snakes. Hello, somebody. They are brood of vipers, uh, and Jesus uh, didn't like them, uh, and the forerunner of Jesus didn't like them either. Hello, somebody. John the baptizer didn't like them either. Hello, somebody. John the baptizer didn't like him either. This is what John had to say when he saw these people. He said, but when John saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees coming to his place of baptism, he said to them, you brood of vipers who want you to flee from the coming wrath. You brood of vipers. Remember, brood of vipers is a, oh, a congregation of snakes. Hello, somebody. We, we heard about some of them in Sunday school. If you were in Sunday school about how some of these so-called men of God goes to these conferences and, and they're out drinking and smoking and partying and gambling and they leave their wife at home and bring the girlfriends. Brood of vipers. Jesus would call them this day. That's why I said I always brought my wife. Hello, somebody. Everyone I've been to, I brought my wife. Hello, somebody. I was doing that for a reason and a purpose. Letting folk know that I'm a holy man of God. Brood of vipers. We have a whole culture of brood of vipers. Oh, even in the Baptist denomination, we talk all about 
a time of our prosperity preachers. But they're brood of vipers. Oh, and with prosperity preachers and amongst Baptists, brood of vipers. Hello, somebody. Jesus couldn't stand them back then, and he can't stand them to this day. And I believe that that's why we have COVID. It has judged many of those who are part of the brood of vipers because vipers won't give their life for the sheep. Vipers, oh, only think about themselves and be selfish in a time such as this. Vipers, close the doors of the church and haven't opened it up in two years now, going on two years. Vipers. Hello, somebody. Jesus couldn't stand the vipers because they were snipers. Hello, somebody. Anybody? saw that movie about the American sniper and they they showed what a sniper does he sits on high and he aims down low and, and he picks off one by one and they said boy if you, you get in a, a place where a snipe you can't get in a place you have a good sniper you can't get in a place because he's gonna kill everyone who comes across his sights and that's why I call these brood of vipers snipers because the text says therefore I am sending you prophets and sages and teachers and then Jesus said this some of them you will what kill and crucify they said 10 of the 12 disciples were killed or crucified. Others, you will fall in your synagogues. Hello, Paul. And pursue from town to town. Hello, Paul, as I read it in the books of Acts. I thought it was, oh, they had the audacity to chase Paul from town to town. I said, boy, isn't that evil? You would think that I, I would only be concerned about Paul's valley, but I, I hate Paul so much. I, I chase him on down to Willie Wood, and I chase him on down to Davis, and I chase him on down to Ardmore. Oh, this uh, is what they did. Uh, they were brutes uh, of vipers. They were snipers, uh, and they were killing. Uh, they were killing the righteous people. Hello, somebody. These were righteous people who were dying because these people were snipers. These were people who God was sending uh, oh, to the church. Uh, and one of the things uh, that I lament uh, as a pastor that, oh, seminary don't teach you. Oh, but I'm so glad uh, that I read my Bible. Uh, because in the Bible, in the book, Jesus says, uh, oh, that in some churches, uh, there'll be a synagogue of Satan. Uh, people who be there, uh, a part of the church. Church, we talked about it a little bit in Sunday school about the wheat in the chair, and that's why Jesus said, Oh, that in the, oh, the harvest, uh, when they separate the wheat in the chair, they look so much alike uh, that if you try to do it, uh, you'll destroy, oh, some sincere Christian, you'll destroy, oh, and Jesus said, There's a seed of Satan, uh, oh, in the household uh, of some of our churches. Uh, and some pastors, uh, oh, spend their whole life uh, preparing and studying the word of God and thinking we're going to go to the church uh, and that everybody in the church uh, is going to say amen and that everybody in the church uh, that says amen in the church service uh, will say amen in the neighborhood. Uh, we'll say, oh, but many times what happened is uh, because of that seed of Satan uh, in the church, uh, many people pastors uh, are very discouraged uh, and from the seminary that I oh, went to they say that after three years in the ministry most of those who oh, studies uh, oh, will go on to another occupation Woo. go on to another occupation 
because they hadn't been taught two things, that there will be opposition in ministry, and they haven't been taught. But we're learning today that if you're going to be a true Christian of the Lord, you have to suffer sometimes. Woo! You have to suffer sometimes. You may not have to give that ultimate sacrifice, but you have to suffer sometimes. And suffering comes in all kinds of ways. Oh, I say that Christian singles suffer. Oh, loneliness. Oh, heartache and pain because they oh decide to go all the way with Jesus and they're not going to compromise. Oh, and when that brother comes with that silver tongue, trying to teach them and talk them out of their religion and take advantage of their body and their minds. they rather suffer loneliness and feeling alone at times than to compromise their body and their lives. Oh, to run after love. Woo. Hello, somebody. Well, says, if loving you is wrong, I don't want to be right, but a true Christian of God who's fully committed and willing to suffer. If loving you is wrong, I don't want to have nothing to do with you. Hello, somebody. In Jesus' name, Christians suffer. As a Christian, a man who's married and he's suffering in his wife, in his, in his, in his marriage, his wife, and vice versa. A Christian woman who's married to a husband and, 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 and she's going through and he's going through. And had they not given their life to Jesus Christ, they would have given up a long time ago. But they'd rather suffer in their marriage and obey the word of God. Oh, they to live a lie that the devil tells that the grass is greener on the other side. Oh, the grass ain't greener on the other side. The grass that's greener on the other side has a higher water bill. Hello, somebody. Hello, somebody. Somebody's paying. Hello, somebody. That's what happened in marriage. I say, you go, you're going to have to give up something when you get married. Hello, somebody. Hello, somebody. Christianity, you have to suffer at times. Oh, most of us will not be called to give the ultimate sacrifice of the people that we're studying today. But to be a Christian, oh, cause. Hello, somebody. To be a Christian, because especially if you're fully committed, it will cost you some kind of suffering. I used to wonder when, this is before I got in to uh, the ministry. I, I used to wonder why at work, as I was trying to share the gospel with my co-laborers or, or associates, I used to wonder why I have problems, not with them, but with other so-called Christians. They were the one giving me the trouble. And I thought there was something wrong. I'm like, Lord, what's, is there something wrong with me? These other folk that say that they're Christians, they are the one that's giving me the most trouble here at work as I try to be an example, as I try to live uh, for Christ. Uh, oh, it was these other Christian folk, supposedly Christian folk, who were giving me the most problems. Well, they were who Jesus called snakes. And they were being snipers. They were trying to kill my Christianity because, uh, oh, they, the devil saw me. Oh, that I was going to take this thing all the way. I just wasn't, oh, satisfied just with being uh, average. I was just not satisfied with just uh, being called a Christian. I had to live that Christian life. And I had to, oh, hear the voice of God. And I accepted my call, oh, to ministry. But I was preaching long before I got to this point. Hello, somebody. Hello, somebody. But the snipers were after me then, and the snipers are still after me today. The snakes are still after me today. All times of time. It don't take all of that. Why are you preaching so hard? Why are you screaming? It don't, it don't take all of that. Same folk, you put them in front of a Sooner game and let the Sooner score. Woo! Heavy jump! Woo! Jumping, screaming, high, running, 
the church mouse at church. Hello, somebody. Let the Sooners score. Let the Cowboys score. Hello, somebody. They shake. It's like an earthquake. Hello, somebody. It's like an earthquake. And you wonder why they have the crowds. They have the crowds because people are excited. And people tell all oh, the gospel according to their favorite football team. They don't want to pay a hundred dollars in ties here at the church, but to go to a sooner game, they got season tickets. Thousands of dollars. Woo! They don't take all of that. Yes, it do. But what you believe in, it takes all of that. It took all of that for them terrorists on 9-11 who changed the world because of the fallacy that they believed in the cowardice act. That they did. It changed the world. Imagine if Christian folk got fully committed. Christian folk got fully committed to the point that they'd be willing to die for what they believe. They'll be like the 12 disciples who were said to turn the world upside down. We got enough in here today to turn the world upside down. But it's going to take a complete a commitment. It's going to take a, all of that. Hello, somebody. It's going to take all of that. And all of these sincere folk would die. Jot Jeremiah 26 down a little later. So I'm running out of time. Read that a little later. This last point. Again, as we're talking about today, the people that produce martyrs. This last point, point number three. The people wiped out the saints. The people wiped out the saints. They were like snipers. They just, they was wiping them out. Verse 35 says, and as, and so upon you will come all the righteous blood Righteous people do die for the cause uh, of Christ. There's righteous blood uh, that's crying out. Uh, and that righteous blood uh, of people who truly died for what they believe uh, is crying out to us today and say that we need to be willing to offer God a better sacrifice. Uh, oh, like Abel, we learned today. Jesus talked about Abel. He was thought to have died thousands of years before Jesus came on the scene. And he said, all the righteous blood that has been shedded on the earth from the blood of who? Righteous Abel. Abel's life still speaks. Oh, they say after, oh, 4,000 years or more. Abel's life still speaks uh, because he was determined to offer God uh, a better sacrifice. Uh, and when we studied his life, uh, it took faith uh, to offer God uh, a better sacrifice. Uh, that's what separated uh, his sacrifice uh, from Cain. Uh, oh, in Hebrews chapter 11, it says by faith, uh, he offered God uh, a better sacrifice. Uh, and by faith, uh, I implore you, all the disciples of all Bethlehem Baptist Church, to offer God a better sacrifice. To offer God a better sacrifice. To offer God a better sacrifice. Talked about a man most of us never heard about. Zechariah, the son of Barkia. Most of us don't know about him. Second Chronicles 24 talks about what happened to him, another righteous man who would die for what he believes in Christ. Back then it was Jehovah. Second Chronicles 24 and 21 says, but they conspired against Zacchaeus and by the order of a king, order of the king, what did they do? They stoned him. Okay, surely, where did they stone him? Who stoned him in the foyer? 
of the household of the Lord. Boy, these some bad boogers, huh? No wonder Jesus called them snipers or snakes. Prove or snipers. They were killing the righteous. These were people G God and Jesus sent to share and to give the word. They were killing them. And the most encouraging thing about this is that they were willing to die. Woo. What we see in these COVID times, there are not a lot of preachers ain't willing to die. No, no, no. We'll keep the doors of the church closed. We don't need to meet. In public no more, though the Bible did say you were saying for the last 40, 50 years to forsake not the assembly together of the saints. Oh, but in COVID times, oh, you want to close the church. Not only that, but you want to keep the church closed. Some were made to close, and I've said this, made this observation. Yeah, we were made to close, but hey, I think that didn't last but about a month or so. Here we are a year or so more, and still today, some churches have not been open. Why is that? Because the men of God, the so-called men of God, want to keep it closed because they're afraid to die. Blows my mind. You preach and teach about heaven, but you don't want to die to get there. That's the only way you're going to get there. Tell somebody. I've been telling you during this series, the suffering on this earth, because this earth is not heaven. It's only in heaven where there'll be no more dying, no more crying, no more sorrow, no more tears, no more hurricanes, no more wildfires, no more floods. Oh, it's only in heaven. And how do we get to heaven? Most of us are going to have to die to get there or be raptured. Healthy, you believe what you've been preaching for 50, 40, 30 years? You afraid to die? The Bible says to teach us to number our days. Not trying to be morbid, but we live in a morbid world. Folk are dying every day of the coronavirus, of cancer. We live in a morbid world. Our loved ones are dying every day. Even as we intercede on behalf of Sister Nell. The loved ones are dying every day. And some of our loved ones want to die because of, oh, the, oh, what's going on in their body, the pain. There's no more pain in heaven. So why do you want to stay here on this earth? Ooh-wee. These people were willing to die. And they died. For Christ. And they. Will get what all Christians will get. They will get a heaven when Jesus comes back. Again. So saints. People of God. Don't be like these people in the text. Don't be like the brutes of vipers. Oh, don't be like the snakes in the text. Don't be like the snipers in the text. But be like the saints. Oh, that we're studying all month long. Who are willing to die. Who gave their life the ultimate sacrifice. Oh, they gave their life. Oh, ultimately. For Jesus Christ or for God. And they changed the world because of that. They changed the world because of that. Oh man, I'm out of time. Let me close in a word of prayer and give the invitation. First of all, I'll give the invitation. All eyes closed, heads about, saints are praying. Father, we thank you, Lord, for your word and we pray. That people at the sound of our voice will understand who Jesus was and why he was so upset with the snakes and the vipers. He was upset with the snakes and the vipers because they were impeding people's uh, ability to get to God. So much so that Jesus had to destroy that whole system of the temple. And when Jesus died on the cross, the curtain in the temple split from top to bottom. Uh, signifying that, that we no longer need a priest. We, 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 everybody has 
ultimate access to God. And today somebody's listening at the sound of my voice and you have ultimate access to God. If you can believe that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Then today you can be saved. Today you can inherit heaven. And heaven is not here on earth. Heaven is when Jesus come back again. And you want to be in that number. Oh, even those who died in Christ. Or those who are living in Christ. When that great trumpet sound and the dead in Christ rise first. Oh, you want to be in that number. Or oh, when the, those who are alive will be caught up in a twinkling in an instant of an eye. You want to be in that number. And today you can give your life to Jesus Christ. Believe he died for your sins, was buried and raised again on the third day. Is there anybody here that needs to give their life to Jesus Christ? Is there one? Is there one today? Is there one? I know we're out of time. And I know most likely we're doing what uh, the old folk used to say. We're preaching to the choir. In other words, people who are committed uh, are listening to this invitation right now. But just in case. There's somebody here today or listening at the sound of my voice have heard the Spirit of God convict their heart of sin, of righteousness, and of judgment and wants to give their life to Jesus Christ. Slip out of your seat right now. Is there one? Is there one? Is there one? Is there one? Hey man, is there another? Is there another? Is there another? Is there another? Hey man, praise. Lord. Amen. Yes, he is. Yes. Yes, yes. 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 Amen. Yes. 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 Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. We stand here because we do need the Lord. We stand here because we need Bethlehem. Yes. And those people that I call names out represent all of you. Amen. They represent all of you. <clears throat> they represent the entire family of Bethlehem. Amen. So when I call out names, it's not showing form or fashion. They come in that order. Amen. So we come, Brother, Brother Parsley came to see if there's anything we could do for you. Brother Gil said, I don't know how to do it, but I'm here. Amen. That's a thing. That's, that's great for me. And I tell her, Sister Tony, you pass my drive, we're going to talk. She said, but I'm getting where I can't see. Hmm. Okay? So I tell you what, keep us in prayer. Amen. I've lost my family, and it hasn't been good. Uh, I lost my brother-in-law, and... Ten days later, I lost his, his wife, my sister. Mm. And in the midst of that, their kids had made reservations to come into the funeral because they had a miniature reservation. And their grandmother died. Mm. Their daddy's mom. 
Hmm. So we have a king of her. And I had a brother in law and a sister, two sisters that lived in Phoenix. And we shipped my sister home. And we had a service, and I was so grateful. I looked out in the mist, and there's Smith, Brother Al. Amen. You know, that was that man. That, that's something to be thankful for. And I don't know if people, y'all are so into group that you haven't had that chance to be separated from it. Mm. But I miss Ray. I miss a lot. I miss your son. Amen. I miss uh, your baby. Yes, yes. Deacon, what? Yes, I yes. I miss people when I come in here. Yes. Yes, yes. You know, and, and it's not about who we Ooh, look what they look what they got. Look what they it's not I couldn't see what y'all were doing or how you doing it. It's coming in this house with Thanksgiving. I know we're running out of time and I can sit here and talk too long. But I love the Lord. Amen. And we're standing here today for y'all to know that when we can't get back in here to church and he been gone, I just lost my, my brother in law and then my nephew, they had my brother in law's funeral. And that night he drove into an 18 wheel of film gas and killed himself. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. We are uh, driven. In March, they found my sister's son dead. Mm -hmm. Okay, we took care of that. We just took care of that. So, Brother Park has had, in his family, every week somebody died. Our great grandson, about three weeks ago. Our great grandson, somebody kicked the door in, went in, killed him. Mm -hmm. Took took the money, but they didn't take the dope. Hmm. Keep it real. Hmm. Hmm. 44 years old. Uh, I'm going to give thanks to the Lord and uh, uh, I'm asking you all to give us opportunities to come back to church. Hmm. We've been gone a long time. Amen. But the Lord, Lord has blessed us. Uh, my wife is a chauffeur now. I can't, I, I can't see. I'm hmm. just blind. Hmm. But I can see how to go down the road, but back I got some thick glasses to try to read, man. I don't know, how, but he blessed me. Yes, and yes, I'm yes. Still, I'm still alive. I wake up every morning. Mm -hmm. All right. And I enjoy my family and my kids. Mm -hmm. So he will give me an opportunity to get back in the church. Amen. And be able to start serving the Lord. Amen. And that's what we want to do. Amen. 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 God will give us an opportunity to do that. Amen and praise Amen. the Lord. Well, Dick, you know. How I see it. How you see it, Al? Oh, I can't. He, he, he's got to see it. <laughs> he ain't never lost it. Hey? <laughs> ain't never lost it. So welcome back. <laughs> Amen. Give God a hand clap of praise. Amen. Kind of don't worry about that scene. I can't see either. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, you know, sis. Brother, this is part, um, friends, y'all have, have not been gone. So there's nothing to come back to. Yes, we yes. Know that things and opportunities in life come upon all of us. Yes, yes. So we know you've been, want you to know that you've been missed, and there's no formal coming back. Yes, yes. We're just glad to have you back. Yes, and yes. We just love you, and we've been praying for you. Amen. Amen and praise the Lord. Amen and praise the Lord. God bless you. I'm going to go ahead and say a special prayer for the princess and Sister Nell and uh, all of those who are traveling uh, and those who are mourning. Uh, would you please stand and then I'll give the benediction. Shall we pray? Father God, we thank you. We praise you. We glorify your holy name, Father. Thank you, Lord, for the prince and their whole family, Father. We thank you, Lord, for their commitment, Father. We pray, Lord, that you will be with them, Father, from this point and forevermore, Father. We pray, Lord, that you comfort their hearts, minds, and souls as they have dealt with the detrimental loss. Detrimental loss, Father. We pray, Lord, that you continue to strengthen their hearts, minds, and soul in Jesus' name. Father, we do lift up, sister, nail to you and her lost father. Pray, Lord, that you be with them in their service, I believe, tomorrow, Father. Comfort a heart, mind, and soul, Father, in Jesus' name. 
Care for her like only you can. Remind the Lord of the Jackson family who had some a loss and the Campbell family who had a loss and Father God, we're reminded of Brother Rocky, Father. We pray, Father, that you would touch his body, touch his heart, touch his mind, touch his soul, Father, in Jesus' name. That you will encourage him and give him the strength that he needs to make it through such a time as this, Father. In Jesus' name, we lift him up to you, Lord, and we lift up his mother to you. Give her strength. Give her all the mercy and grace that she needs for such a time as this father and their whole family father in Jesus name we're going through so much Lord but we thank you Lord that you're right there in the midst like you're with Shadrach Meshach and Abednego in the midst of the fire you're right there in the midst in the same way you were with with Daniel in the lion's head you're in the midst father in the same way at about midnight when Paul and Silas were singing hymns and songs of praise you showed up somebody needs to show up today before they leave this place right here right now touch move deliver heal father in jesus name in jesus name we accept the victory right here and right now and we leave this place as victors to go and tell a lost and dying world about jesus and the pardoning of their sins Thank you, Father. Put your hedge of protection around us. Keep us safe from all harm and danger until we meet again. And the people of God said, Amen. And praise the Lord. Amen. And praise the Lord. Be encouraged, church. In Jesus' name. Amen.